This is the Table for Two edition of the Deliberate Talks podcast and I'm your host Dakshina Dyantaya featuring leading minds that are determining the future of their profession and its allied sectors. In today's episode we redefine the vision of talent nurturing offering an essential perspective on the art of finding the perfect cast for every masterpiece. And who better to talk about it than Sharanya Subramanyam who breathes magic into scripts and stories with her eye for spotting talent. Sharanya is the founder and casting director at Sharanya Spots Talent and has worked on close to 300 TVCs and various large format projects. Also, the very first season of the Tamil Big Boss ad was her very first casting project and since then she has worked with brands like Tata Play, Amazon, Zomato, Swiggy and many more. Apart from this, she has worked on various films like Mara, Navrasa and recently announced Mani Ratnam's film Thug Life. In our conversation today we go behind the scenes to the world of casting and discover the triumphs and the struggles of spotting the right artist all this with Charanya right after this intro Sharanya, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for making time for the show. And uh, Sharanya, we have a small ritual as a part of the show always when we start this show. We started a very light note and it's almost like a warm-up question. So, let's start the warm-up question by asking you, if you had to cast someone for the biggest project or your dream project, why would it be me? <laughs> hmm because i watched one of your plays and i really loved it and that's how i got to know you as well so um, i thought it was very well written and uh, it was extremely well presented it was so tight it was beautiful it was refreshing and um, yeah i think that's the only reason why i'm going to cast you in the biggest dream My project God. of mine yeah you got me on this one so uh, I thought this will come like a much more one word answer saying no I I don't have such dreams or anything of those sorts but I you... I really don't have such dreams also like because I think I've discussed this with you before I'm not here to become the biggest casting director or anything I want to be really good at whatever I do so I I don't have such dreams but if an opportunity comes I'm obviously going to grab it right so then I'm going to think of you of course awesome on that note you're not going to get any uh, bonus points during rapid fire round i'm not going to be any kind for being so sweet to me <laughs> what <laughs> but on that note let's get straight to asking you and this is a question which is long due and i'll tell you it's it's as long due as 2 years because uh, this is when dilip the director of mara had come 2 years ago on this show okay and i like a kid was just kept asking him questions about casting the stories behind it and years later i meet you thanks to a theater festival and connecting all the dots straight back to knowing that you were the casting director of that film is life coming in full circle so from your pov perspective let's understand how do you start this process of identifying the right cast for any film or tv scene in the first place it's like uh, do you go to people and say hey this is my main cast you should cast this person you should cast that person or uh, you know uh, the the director comes to you or or the production comes to you and say this is the rest of the cast these are the characters we want to fill that in how do how do you come into the picture and what's the process like okay so uh, generally with respect to firstly mara was very life changing for me that was my second feature film and uh, Uh, till date it 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 is it holds a really special place in my heart because the process itself was extremely important heartwarming and it changed the way i perceived casting okay so um thanks to the lip because he is a visualizer and you know he, you you sit with him and i I've, i've sat down with him for almost 3 months going through the entire script almost 7 times and i don't think we ever get that kind of time with anybody any other director or any other project um because he was so particular about every inch of that frame right so mm-hmm. not just casting but any other department 
So right. for me, I guess when I just started off, you know, with respect to large format projects, um, that film was really important for me to, you know, become whatever I have become today, like the way I look at casting and how I can cast people and not go the whole traditional way of just having people who are already in, you know, the whole acting circle, the usual uh, people. I mean, no, no, um, uh, obviously I am going to cast people who are already in it, but the idea of finding people, finding talent, um, even finding people that they don't know they have it in them, you know, so we've done yeah. all of that. So um, generally the process starts off with reading a script or mm -hmm. getting a narration and um, whichever, you know, is ready. So if the director wants to narrate, he'll completely give me an entire picture of the film and um, uh, he'll give me an entire list of characters of the film. So, and it'll be pretty descriptive. Sometimes they wouldn't know what they want to do as well, but they'll just have a character. And because right. we've read the script, we'll also get an idea of, you know, what kind of people we can put in there. So um, once we get that description, we'll kind of start putting down, you know, faces and names of people that we know and we've found. So it's never like, you know, only people from our database. We do a lot of research. We do a lot of back end work where we we reach out to a lot of actors. I've even like done this with random people on the streets. I've seen some extremely interesting faces and I've gone to them and been like, I'm a casting director. They wouldn't know what it is. I'll explain what I do. Um, and I'll tell them that, listen, this is what we do. And you seem very interesting. Would you be interested? And some people have, you know, been wanting to become actors as well. And we've even cast such people like random strangers to the screen. And with respect to Mara, we did a lot of street casting. I traveled with them for the entire film. I was with them for almost two and a half months traveling to all the cities because the director felt that it wasn't just about those important um, characters alone, like like in the sense, the ones that have a meaty um, role. It's about even those little, little things, even, a, um, you know, in, in Tamil, we say, yella, cherry, kodi, yavdin, salon. Like even the leaves... Even the tree, even a little puppy behind is so important for the film. So yeah. every frame, you know, he wanted to have people that that were appropriate for that particular world. And because Mara was a travel film, he was very, very particular about every face. So, um, yeah, I think it's really about understanding uh, the brain of the director, like what he's thinking, which right. is sometimes... Um, not possible for us. We don't get to really interact with all the directors, but 99% of the time with respect to all my um, films, I have sat down with the director, understood what he wants. And then we do the coordination with the associate director or the direction team. So right. I also feel that there's a contribution from my side apart from what is provided only um, from them. Because sometimes sure. they have a vision but we throw another perspective that's also very exciting. Like you watched Mara and there was Alexander Babu right. playing the thief. So that wasn't the description provided to me visually or even character wise. But okay. I did give him one or two options that fit his thing. But again, we didn't really select anyone yet. And suddenly I got this idea of Alex, uh, yes. you know, why not? It might be interesting. And right. he thought about it. He said, okay, let me see. Maybe, you know, I really love him as a, as a stand-up comedian, but I'm not able to see him as a thief. Can you give me two days time? I'll think about it and get back. And what I love about him is instead of saying no, he actually thought about it and he was like, can we audition him? And I said, yeah, he, we auditioned him and you, you have no idea how amazing the experience was. It was so magical. It was so different from what he'd written that he rewrote the entire episode with the writer because we brought someone like him, um, you know, for that role. So I, I realized that casting is not just about um, bringing what is written there, but also bringing additional refreshing perspectives that can, you know, add so much more value or change the entire, um, you know, what do you call it? The, the spectrum of what you're imagining. So that's because I see a lot of people every day and that's my only job. I think this is, this is the magic with Mara. Like you mentioned, it's, it's, it plays a very yeah. special role in your life. Even with my conversation with Dilip, you know, with so much passion coming out and, and as a viewer, I love the film as well. I love Armadwan's acting anyways. 
in this conversation, I see so many stories over there. Now, from your casting perspective, his story from a director's perspective. I think we should just have an episode for Mara where we get the entire yeah. cast and we just talk have talk so about many stories. stories. <laughs> yeah. But so but many stories. Yeah, one, one interesting thing you spoke about was the street auditioning, right? Uh, yeah. in, in modern day today, when you walk up to someone, like you said, there are certain people who want to become actors. It's a great opportunity for them, like an opportunity coming to them. What about those people who yeah. have never expected this as an opportunity? How do they react to it? Tell me a funny or strange incident that has happened to you in such a scenario. Um. Yeah, I mean, some of them are like, what me? What do you see in me kind of a thing? But um, again, I'm not going to be casting somebody because I like a face or something or I find them interesting. Obviously, I find them interesting. Then I'm going to call them in, see if it's appropriate as a performer. As in, I mean, if they are OK as a performer as well. But with mm -hmm. respect to some films, like even Mara, there were a lot of portions where they didn't really need to act. They just needed to not be scared of a camera, you know. But we needed specific faces, like, you know, faces that just were distinct or very interesting. So we had like almost 200 plus characters in the entire film to cast, out of which almost 100 to 120 were coming under the category of interesting faces. Like you can ask Dilip also about it. So we should write interesting faces. He wanted one bride who was bohemian looking with tattoos all over her body. And I was like, can we... Can we create the tattoos? No, I want her to have tattoos. And I found one. I found a girl who had tattoos all over her body. So, you know, it was just so exciting to, to find these people, you know, it, that the challenge is there and that's what's really exciting for me, you know? So that's why when today, when I'm even with respect to ads, I'm so torturous, you know, with my directors, I'm like, what more? Can you give me more information? Can you tell me more about this person? And they're like, no, this is, yeah, he's a cop. He's this, I'm like, what kind of a cop is he? What was he before? I don't have a backstory. You know, tell me a backstory, you know, because yeah. that really brings in so much personality. And that's what is more appropriate when you're watching. It doesn't feel like you've cast them. You know, it feels like they were meant to be this. You know what right. I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, um, I've actually reached out a lot of people on Facebook on uh, Instagram, people who've never even imagined they'd act, they'll, they'll reply saying, uh, I don't understand why you've messaged me this, but okay, like yesterday I went to a party and I met this lady, She's she's got full gray hair and I told her that I've been friends with you on Facebook for a very long time, I even messaged you, but you didn't really respond, but I understand, but let me know if you'd be interested in like getting into acting, she's like, Sharanya, but I can't act. I said, uh, no, that's not your problem. I'll take care of that. You know, you know, right. you're like some 60 plus and we don't really expect you to, to be like one fabulous uh, uh, professional actor or anything. As long as you're not scared of the camera, I'll take care of things. And then right. she's like, okay, if you're that confident, I'm okay with it. And I've had a 65 year old who's a Bharatanatyam dancer today being the most popular granny on television you know like tv ads and all of that and i wow. launched her as an actor she didn't even think she'd become an actor right so i'm that's what i'm saying it's the way you approach these people right mm -hmm. more than funny stories i think it's important to not just randomly go to somebody and be like hey i'm in media you need to act or whatever there's a way to talk to them there's a right. way to tell them that it is a really exhilarating and fun and safe and beautiful uh, space and experience that you can have. Um, right. So I'm here to do that. And I will tell them what I do. I'll tell them how I approach my people. And and I will also tell them to get back to me and not get their number or anything. I'll tell them this is where I am, like my address or my Instagram profile, and you can get back to me. Actually, I do have one funny story if you have the time for a minute. Please do. Um, I was having um, a brunch with my best friends um, at uh, Bread and Chocolate. And the space is like really, like every table is very close to each other, right? So the friends, all of us were cracking jokes, having fun meeting after like 10 years. So it was really fun. And there is this brother, sister. I didn't know they were, they were siblings, but there was this girl and little one young boy sitting next to me. He had beautiful hair. He's like, pakka hero material. Okay. You see him and he's like, perfect hero material. He looked amazing. I was telling my friends, I was like, oh my God, I want to talk to him. I, wanna, I know this is like my break day or whatever but I still can't like I, there's this urge for me to go talk to him 
and i literally slid from my side to his side of the seat okay because it's a it's a continuous uh you know couch kind of a thing so i just slid and i went to them and i'm like i'm so sorry i'm barging into your you know time and conversation and all of that they were like uh okay yeah tell me and i said uh, i'm a casting director and uh, i run this company called shanya sports talent um i just find you to be very very um you know good looking and interesting and if you may be interested in acting get in touch with us get in touch with us here and he's like uh, no 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 i'm not interested in acting he immediately said no and his sister's like i think you should consider you know and i'm like i like people like that you know i like people who kind of support and and he's like no 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 i've i'm still studying and i don't think i'd ever want to be an actor and i said okay no problem no i'm not forcing you but i'd love for you to just follow us and any time you change your mind you know that i'm here to kind of guide you and he's like okay cool and i slid back to my space and they left after that in 5 minutes and 10 minutes later i get a message dm on instagram I thought about it. I think I'll consider it. I was like, "What?" <laughs> you know. So, you know, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, you just never know. Yeah. Right. So, I've I've built that confidence through this job to just go to anybody and talk to them with so much, you know, without any fear or without any thing because I know my intent. I know what I'm trying to do here. So. This is interesting. Now, uh, you walked up to someone, you spotted talent in parties and other places. I'm very keen on understanding what do you think about the rise of social media influencers, and uh, you know how have they sort of made their own way into casting themselves as yeah. you know their 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 social media as their audition clips or portfolios, right? How has this changed from the traditional acting talent? uh coming into the picture and how do you spot such people for your projects yeah so today this generation even with respect to films and ads and all of that most brands would like to associate with a lot Correct. of uh, faces that are more recognizable it, it need not be film um you know popular actors from the film side but i'm talking about like you said the social media influencers and i think it's it's fine because there's a lot of beautiful talent out there as well and it's great that they're able to create that brand for themselves by themselves and not depending on you know a film like many actors come to me and say i'm not getting this opportunity so it's amazing that they're able to do consistent continuous work for themselves and create like a brand for themselves so it's right. also easy for me to kind of just place them here and you know they also get their money they get their fame they get everything that they want um but having said that i'm not going to lie but it's not like all social media influencers are um great actors and when i mean great actors it's subjective obviously depending on the role that we're auditioning them for so um it is tricky it is challenging for us uh, especially when we get this requirement of no i want them to be popular and be really good and if that that category kind of you know it's it becomes too restricted so it is hard um right. so what i do is to kind of also push them um because we are also kind of growing as a brand i talk to them personally push them to start getting trained as actors because doing something on um their phones um creating reels and all of that is is not the way to kind of um you it's not a practice ground for you as an actor right it's great right. to create your brand even normal actors should do that according to me but on the side there should always be constant practice of you know honing your um skill set of becoming an actor so that way what happens is you you are not just a popular brand but you're also known for your performance uh, capabilities so i think um, if actors do that like especially influencers then i think there's no stopping there's this it's it's like it's never a temporary thing for them because there's so many digital creators you know everywhere like one street you'll find in my building i'm sure there's like some 10 digital creators i'm very very sure so uh, you know there's so much competition and everybody's like literally going from one person to another so then how do you sustain i think this is one of the ways um for them and us to be benefited do they come knocking at your door and say ma'am please give me a chance <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've got meals i mean these guys some people do yes of course because they are also tired of 
just um, posting out reels and posting out ad stuff online. They also want to do some nice, um, you know, characters and films and ads and stuff like that. So they do reach out to us. But I've also got these random mails before saying, "Hi, ma'am, we want. I want. I want to be actor." or i want to acting all of that kind of mails no name no contact number no nothing and that's why i had to invest so much money on developing one internal app where you know i just give you a link you fill out the form being as like i'm spoon feeding every person so much i'm sure you've done that little research of what we've done like even today i conduct this whole thing called open introductions where we talk to them we give them hope we tell them what to do what the process of casting is because nobody knows the thing you keep rejecting me nobody selects me i go for an audition i've done 100 auditions but i don't get selected but i don't blame them they don't understand what the process is and that the process also changes per director per project per brand per time per space per mindset per so many things you know so it's yeah i think we tend to sometimes forget to think of the situation from the other person's shoes we're always bogged down by you know what it is for me why is it it happening for me and and that's when people start giving up and feeling very low and they're like okay let's go back to the old grind my mother was right kind of a thing so no, but this is this is a very significant part of casting process how do you yeah. manage the emotional aspect of telling an actor they haven't been selected right yeah. and what advice would you actually give these actors facing constant rejections yeah thank you for asking this question because that's a very important important process at sst um i've created a process where so my mission vision all of these statements only speak empathy okay mm-hmm. empathy is is the only thing that we kind of you know that's our only principle here that we follow and whoever enters my space will feel that warmth and whoever works with me will always provide that for each other right so um when an actor reaches out to us we'll 100% respond to them and if we've not responded again it's a very rare occurrence because we sometimes do get thousands of messages at one like when we announce that we're working on thug life Mm-hmm. the next minute i'm stormed with 100000 messages but it's and i don't like to just do a copy paste response to everybody right i like to see their profiles i like to get back to them like that so um when we audition an actor we'll we'll be very transparent with our communication we'll tell them that this is what you're auditioning for how much ever met you know information we can give to them and this is what you need to perform this is the kind of frame etc and we'll also tell them um to to feel very comfortable before they start we'll tell them don't rush yes i'm asking you to do this in one hour but try to not like do this with any kind of you know um stress or whatever make sure you're okay because we want to get the best tape from you as well so right. and we don't give up on an actor because they've just sent you one tape and i have another option i don't just give up on this actor i if i see potential i'll work with them even like i'll even do that 10 times I auditioned mm-hmm. one actor for like 2 hours you know trying to get the best out of them because I saw potential I I felt they were so so appropriate and they had it in them maybe that was not their time but what if I give them the comfort and the the space to kind of go back you know and and I think it's important right because otherwise I'm losing out on maybe the perfect cast so I do that like some people complain who work with me also you're you're like too nice to people you're giving too much time you're you know sometimes wasting time and i'd say no i don't think so if i didn't see potential then i'm not going to do that i'm going to say thank you very much so secondly when they don't get selected again we'll only do that when we know for sure they are not selected sometimes it'll always be in hanging you know they'll you're there you're not there we don't know a lot of things will happen the the character would have changed but we'll still hold them because there might be another characters for them it's very easy for me to say oh no you're not selected but again when i come back and say it you're selected again it's very confusing for anybody's um brain to process that right so we'll we'll give them updates we'll always tell them that hey it's taking time and you know we'll get back to you or whatever and if they are not selected we'll always give them a reason we'll tell them why we'll say mm-hmm. unfortunately we had to go with somebody else but we're really looking forward to working with you you know um in the next project and honestly it has happened many actors have been considered again so some actors are because of experience and because they've had bad experiences before 
for them it's so heartwarming to just receive a message saying you're not selected or hmm. you know this is not happening or something just getting a response from somebody without them asking itself is is like what i i didn't even realize somebody could you know be this nice kind of a thing so that itself makes them feel good and the fact that they're considered for several auditions itself makes them feel very very um happy and i am also somebody where i if they are like i'll i'll sense their personalities and i'll kind of um i'm a little straight forward little too straight forward not brutal very nice but also very like you know um out there kind of a thing right. so i'll tell them hey this is not enough you need to work on yourself and this is how you can work on yourself i have even okay. told them don't do our 3 day workshop try and do our 10 day workshop or mm. go to a space where you can continuously work on a daily basis i can even put you in touch with people so these kind of things where we give them solutions as well so when they go back they're like okay you know okay i didn't know what i was doing because i enter a space i get out and i don't get a call so i don't know why i didn't get selected now at least i have a little clarity as to where what's going on so i know what i need to do to kind of you know at least understand what's going on so i think um, it's important to to respect anybody who gets into your space whether you're a casting director or um, you know you run an agency or whatever it is everybody comes with some sort of hope right so Absolutely. i think it's important to send them back with you know a little more right yeah. and and i'm sure this pans across various generations various age groups as well Absolutely. right Absolutely. which is the most difficult age group to convince this or even work with and when i say work with is spending more time with uh, you know in terms of getting the right cast tell me a few opportunities that you had working with say you know like like people say right uh, casting or getting a perfect shot with a child is the most difficult part most times because to get them in the right mood in front of the camera is is tough do you agree to that or is it the other age groups as well which is you no know, i really think kids are very 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 sharp and very talented these days and these days parents are like very smart huh? parents are becoming directors and writers and all of that they kind of orient the child beforehand they have a way of i mean it's not like i kind of subscribe to it i'm not really happy with it also because they're very they have their unlana that's it i will all that they do i don't like it so i don't even allow my the parents right. to come into the space because they're like if you do this i'll get you an ice cream if you don't do this i'm going to hit you and no i feel like the child is also burdened in some way and i don't like it so i kind of spend time with the children i ask them for their favorite comic uh, um you know or an actor or something or a, or a cartoon character like recently there was this little child who came is very shy but i know that he talks a lot like at home so i kind of take a little time to understand the child and then i'll ask for certain things that they like and he liked hulk so both of us were like hulk you know we were all doing all of these poses of hulk we were screaming and what happened was when we did that hulk thing together in another room in my studio space one we have like a white board it fell down okay it fell oh. down because my maid kind of hit it or something like that and both of us laughed because we were like oh we were we are the ones who did it because you know because of the hulk thing and you have no idea the audition was so fantastic because he felt at home he felt okay. so comfortable and he was amazing so all you need to do is to before judging any actor whether they're a child or you know an old person i think it's important to first make them feel comfortable and at home and um, have a space that's very inviting and not something to you know it's it's like a corporate scary kind of a thing i don't really because especially you know the, with the work that we do because if you're not giving that kind of a space to a person then they're also not going to give it all to you as a character then you can't be like come on you can do it give me hmm. more na they're not going to be able to do it right so i feel children are pretty smart again um some children uh, need more work, assistance and you know uh, help and all of that but i believe all children are natural um actors they're very expressive and all of that in their own ways um but i think i i would say i wouldn't say uh, toughest to work with i think the toughest toughest to find are the older you know people i won't say toughest it's more challenging because there are a lot of people but it it's just that i i don't have too many in my database to be honest mm. like because 
I feel like the ones who are there are really good. The ones I want to search for, I have to really develop and, you know, I have to train them from scratch. So um, I really wish for more young actors or young people to to push their parents and grandparents to get into this whole, I wouldn't say just acting, like the whole idea of performing art, storytelling and putting them in spaces like that because whether they're doing this for seeing themselves in front of a camera on, on TV or on screen, um, I think the experience of you know, being around a space like that makes them feel very nice and calm instead of sitting at home and, um, you know, feeling like, what are we doing? We're waiting for our child to come and feed them. I think it'll be great if they can get such opportunities. I'm using this platform to to tell all the youngsters for their parents and grandparents to come and visit our space and we'll have fun with them. We'll, we'll, we'll send them back with so much more happiness. Mind-blowing. So I'm just going to conclude this round with one last question from your brand perspective. And you did mention about a lot of brands uh, having their expectations as well. You know, while you have the patience and you have a certain knack of identifying the talent, how different is it working for brands in comparison to films, right? You have worked with close to around 300 TVCs. What's the challenging bit? How are they different from films? Uh, What's the process like there? Um, so I I only work with the director as in I only um, kind of communicate with the director. So um, fingers crossed, you know, I most of the directors come from a very um, cinema perspective, right. even for ads, especially these days. All the ads we watch are very, it's all storytelling based and not just coming and giving, showing a product kind of a thing. Right. So the, the casting process, honestly, is pretty similar um but again we need to find talent that can that can perform really well i feel like more than films ads you need to have better actors because there's lesser time there's less lesser time to shoot and um they need to be able to grasp things very easily they should have a little bit of experience because that way it just makes it easy for the entire crew especially after covid i think you know everything has it's like um Things have gone really like, you know, right. uh, fast paced and all of that. So, um, but like you said, they do have specific um, requirements when it comes to certain brands. They like, I want this kind of one amma, you know, a mother should be like Santur amma, you know, even for another brand, they'll be like, I want a Santur mom, you know. So this is how they tell us. And I mean, again, for me. Everything is subjective. According to me, everything is subjective. The way I see a Santur mom, I will not see the mom that's cast in Santur. What they mean by Santur mom is a particular kind of a mother, right? So I'd be like, what is that kind of mother? For me, it's all about description. You can't just show me a face and be like, I want a face like this. I'm not, I could do that. I am here to do that. Like I said, I was doing this film where they wanted someone who looked like Abraham Lincoln. So I would give you someone who looks like him because that that character required a, a, you know, a face, a jawline like him and all of that. But I'm saying for such, you know, roles, I think it's important to be as descriptive as possible, even if it's for one second, they're just going to come in for one second. So when it comes to brands, they are specific about where they come from, how many followers they have, uh, what they represent, what kind of, how they, how their personalities are, how they speak and a lot of things and sometimes they are also pretty i don't know if i can say this but they go by color and all of that they want they want somebody um uh you know if they if it's local then it's dark if it's if it's you know like in south at least if it's posh and elite or whatever it's fair um which i i break a lot of times i've had um nice chubby beautiful dusky dark men and women part of something that's very elite and you know uh, an autocar who's actually like an autowala who's who's kind of beatish and fair i have cast people i've done an uber ad where the autowala was was fair right mm-hmm. like fair looking so i think we should change such things it is changing i'm not saying it's not like it's been a long time since i got such requirements now agencies Brands are also like, hey, inclusivity and all kinds of people and stuff like that. 
but i'm talking about many years ago i've i've gone through such situations where i've been really angry so the only thing i've always told myself is i want to get to this position of power you know for the only reason where i can i can change all of this you know so we're getting there like you know yeah. the whole industry is getting there so it's it's exciting yeah absolutely very cool very cool stuff there sharinya that brings us to the end of our first round of questions okay and I'm it's time for the rapid yeah. fire round of questions oh, no i'm scared where do i go hide i don't know what to do okay it's time to put the skills to test so ready for it i don't know i'm scared of rapid fire i'm really good at watching them i can't i can't do this oh, this will be easy i'm sure this is going to be let's... a piece of cake for you okay that's it Right then. In sixty seconds, five tips for any actors who come for an audition, and what is the easiest way to crack a gig? Okay, first thing, practice every single day, and know what to practice. You can't just stand in front of a mirror and do it. Two, you need to build a good portfolio, and you don't need to have done work to build a portfolio. You have a phone. You have, all of us have great phones, so just take good pictures, natural pictures. Monologues need to be created. and you don't need to wait for an opportunity to create monologues you have seen scripts all over the internet you read books to whatever create scenes and record them and send it to us and don't wait for an opportunity create the opportunity this is a world where you can do it by yourself the fifth point is once you get that opportunity give the best not your best but the best so be ready for it awesome okay In fifty seconds, five actors or directors or personalities you want to work with and why? First is Thalewa Rajnikant. Second is Thalewa Rajnikant. <laughs> I love him, and uh-huh. I'd love to work with him for sure. Um, honestly speaking, uh, I know this is rapid fire, but I'm not somebody who really is this whole industry person and all of that. You know, I didn't come here to become, you know, this. Right? I'm just a normal person. who loves to be around people so i love talewar rajnikanth and i would love to work on a film um where i could you know just watch him every day but apart from that i really don't have any specifics yeah. so we consider it into 5 with you. that in the next 40 seconds if actors need to attend workshops what kind of workshop should they attend and why okay a workshop that kind of helps you understand mind body soul internal external so it should never be just about how to read a script or how to get into character it's also about who you are firstly identifying and understanding who you are and whether you really are interested in this art form sometimes when you watch something you want to become something but then when you get into it you realize maybe this is not for me so and that's okay So first experience is go to a space where people allow you to be yourself and allow you to understand who you are and a place where you're able to explore your body your soul your mind what's going on so um and I think SST's act intense does that I'm not trying to plug in uh, my I swear you know because um Balakrishnan of Theatre Nisha he is his methodology is is like a methodless method is his methodology which is great right and i've had actors coming in um you know thinking they'll become some big star or whatever and then they go out oh my god i didn't know this was the this was acting you know it, everything changes everything breaks for them but right. again it's a new you know it's like a new life kind of a thing so i think that experience is important for actors okay in 30 seconds one best tip to avoid or deal with casting couch in modern day scenario okay the first thing is i think you should never ever give out any information or uh, trust anybody blindly because they come from this production house or this space or because this somebody's messaging you saying hey you know you're appropriate for some something i like to cast you this is an age where anybody can use chat gpt and uh, bring the right words and you know uh, make it very professional also and sound really good so always do research of who you're dealing with so if you're somebody new and you don't know this industry i'm sure you can find people like even me or anybody else where you can just share a profile or uh, you know uh, somebody's photograph and ask if i know that person whether they're legit or not so it's very important to do the research before you you know meet people in person 
never meet people uh, alone you know see if it's like an office space or a public space take somebody with you there's no harm in doing that take somebody right. with you and um, if you sense i think we should always um, kind of switch on our intuition uh, intuitive mode you know it keep that open all the time so um, you'll feel it you'll sense if something's going wrong yeah makes sense okay in 20 seconds why is sst the place to collaborate with for brands and aspiring actors okay so sharnia spots talent is not just a casting company that places the right faces for the right roles or for the roles but i think it's the process it's the way we deal with our people and the fact that we're able to make things easy um and effective for actors producers and directors which is literally the entire industry so right. it it's like you come to me and it's taken care of you don't have to worry about anything that whole so, department is is like you can just do something else yeah. nice and finally in 10 seconds we are director's friend but definitely we are casting director's friend because <laughs> because we're going to cast you again and again but a director may not cast you again, right <laughs> we're going to do more projects we're going to be working on several kinds of projects so you'll end up actually being cast a lot more um uh, but do be friends with the director as well i'm nobody to say <laughs> you can't <laughs> Lovely. See, it's not that difficult. You did well. I like the questions. I thought it would be very <laughs> scary, like coffee with Karan and all of that, because those questions are like, what would I have said? You know, kind of a thing. So, but yeah, thank I'm glad you. Just with with that, Sharanya, uh, that brings us to the end of today's show. Thank you so much for enlightening us about the world behind the lenses. Firstly, a lot goes on before the film even sees light. and not too much is known for a common person who is not a part of the industry so thank you for enlightening us i thoroughly enjoyed hosting you i hope you had a good time too yes i did and um, uh, this whole concept of casting is pretty new i've been saying this for so many years but i can't believe i'm still saying it it is pretty new still in south of india um, of course for you guys it's very different but for us it's and I'm, i'm i i won't say i'm struggling or whatever i'm really happy with the pace we're going in because it's a it's a choice that i have taken to not rush things but i'm very gr- glad that i'm able to bring in some sort of a structure and system with what i am doing which Absolutely. is kind of um helping a lot of people so um uh, i'm all i'm asking for is um for more people to trust that they can and to never lose hope on their dreams yeah thank you so Lovely. much for for inviting me and i really had a good time i would do this for the like the entire day i'm sure yeah awesome awesome thank you so much and wishing you and sst nothing but the best thank you so thank much you. thank you and with that we come to the end of today's episode don't forget to subscribe to all the audio and video channels of the deliberate talks podcast and pixelated egg digital ventures join me next week for a table for one edition until then be curious be adventurous and never stop learning cheers